Coming up on DTNS, Google wants to help you help the environment. Uber wants to help you leave the airport faster. And wow, that Twitch data breach was big. But was it also bad? This is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, October 6th, 2021 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. From Salt Lake City, I'm Scott Johnson. And I'm Roger Chang, the show's producer. We were just talking about Thanksgiving dinner flavored candy corn and the new Twitter warnings for intense conversations. If you'd like that, get the expanded show, Good Day Internet. Become a member at patreon.com slash DTNS. That is where you can join our top patrons like Dan Voiles, Logan Larson, and Turning Bones. Yay. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. Google announced it intends to auto-enroll an additional 150 million users in its two-step verification process by the end of 2021. Google said it would auto-enroll accounts that have the proper backup mechanisms in place to make a seamless transition. Physical security keys, as well as Android phones and the iOS Google Smart Lock app are supported as a second factor. They did this with Nest, and I was a little skeptical, but it kind of worked, so eh, why not? Canon announced the $1,999 RF 5.2 mm F2.8 L dual fisheye lens designed to be part of a new system to simplify VR and AR production called EOS VR. EOS VR. This lens is designed to be used with the 8K capable R5 mirrorless camera supporting 190 degree capture, allowing for delivery of stereoscopic 180 degree 3D footage. Canon also announced the EOS VR utility and EOS VR plugin for Adobe Premiere to edit content from the EOS VR system. Amazon added a new feature in the Alexa app that gives users more time to finish speaking before the voice assistant begins processing and then answering the command. Users can opt out on any device using Amazon voice services to the feature through the device settings page. Cineverse is a company that helps route text messages for more than 300 operators around the world. It's one of the companies working behind the scenes to make sure that when you send a text from your Vodafone account to someone on SK Telecom, it gets there. In a US SEC filing, Cineverse revealed that in May of this year, it discovered someone had gained unauthorized access to its IT systems. And upon investigation, Cineverse determined that the access had begun five years ago in May 2016. The filing says it gained access to databases of carrier customers, but did not clarify if the attacker gained access to the content of text messages. You may recognize the name Cineverse. It was the company uh, that delivered those 168,000 messages nine months later after one of its servers failed in 2019. HMD announced the Nokia T20, the first Android tablet with a Nokia branding since the 2014 N1. This 10.4 inch tablet includes a Unisoc Tiger T610 system on a chip, four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of uh, gigabytes of storage, starting at $250 and available November 17th. The UK will also get a version with LTE for 200 pounds sterling. The T20 ships with Android 11 with HMD promising two years of major OS up updates. Wow, 2014, DTNS was uh, less than a year old. Last time we had a Nokia tablet. Uh, Google added options to search, maps, travel, and Nest thermostats to help individual users make more sustainable choices. So, hey, if you're out there searching for climate change topics, you're going to see high-quality climate-related information, they say, in a dedicated section. Maps users will be able to set the most fuel-efficient route as their default. It helps the environment, helps your pocketbook. Now, if that does add a lot of time to a trip, it will present other options. It doesn't want you to have to spend hours on the road when you don't need to. This comes uh, to the US first and then Europe will get it next year. Bike and scooter sharing info also coming to 300 more cities worldwide. So-called light navigation for cyclists will be added in the coming months. That adds route info like your estimated time of arrival, elevation and such without having to leave the screen on. Uh, much safer when you're biking. Google announced research it's doing in Israel will be expanded to Rio de Janeiro in Brazil to help cities optimize traffic lights to reduce wasted fuel when you're stopped waiting for the light to change. That is a big one for me. Uh, the travel searches that you do will now show which hotels have made meaningful commitments to sustainability 
whether they've actually received environmental certifications. And when you look up an airplane flight directly, you're going to see the associated carbon dioxide emissions for that flight, including the impact of your seat choice, because economy seats take up less space. So Google considers them to have less impact because they're using less of the plane. Shopping searches will start to suggest sustainable and cost-effective options when searching for energy-intensive applications. You know, if you're buying a new furnace, dishwasher, water heater, stove, dryer, etc. cetera. Uh, for cars, starting early next year, Google will add information to your results when you search for electric vehicles, like how many charging stations that are compatible with that vehicle are nearby. Uh, and when you're searching for how long that EV model takes to charge, it'll tell you that. All right. So lots of, lots of potpourri, a, a basket uh, of <laughs> things to, to help you find more sustainable options. Obviously, this all requires somebody to be looking for them, I suppose. Uh, but but what do you all think? Um, from the broader camera, I like that this feels like Google getting back to why they exist. Um, this isn't so much a... They benefit from it from lot, for lots of reasons, but it's not so much of an ad play or this is some new service like Stadia or whatever that we don't know if it's going to have legs or not. This is them expanding upon what made Google great in the first place, which is better search and organizing the world's information. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. yeah. And, and regard, you know, some people may feel weird about that. I don't know. But for me, this is really helpful, especially the light thing, like uh, nothing more annoying than getting behind all the wrong lights. Obviously, that research is, isn't happening here and it's not, you know more broadly available. I have a feeling that it'll take a lot of sort of local cooperation to make that meaningful for a lot of people in their lives. But uh, but still, this is them expanding on search. And I like search. So I love this kind of stuff when Google talks about it. Yeah, I mean, I over the weekend, I was in San Francisco, which I, I know the city pretty well. But uh, because I was going somewhere that I had never been before, I was using... Well, I, I do Apple Maps and Google Maps in tandem sometimes just mm -hmm. because... I, I'm a crazy person, but I'd like to know how they differ and exactly precisely how they're telling me to get there. And so let's just say, you know, that that's sort of a masochistic uh, way to be driving. But but let's say I'm just going with Google. You know, for now, Google is very good at saying, OK, you want to go to this place? We're going to show you the best route. Here's your estimated time of arrival. Best of luck. Um, so just to have more. Uh, kind of pinpoints of yeah there's something up with these you know the 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 red light that you might be at for longer than you need to be there might be you know an, an eco-friendly way to go about your route that isn't going to uh cut into your total driving time it, to the point where you feel like it's not worth it all of that stuff is just it, it's just it just makes the whole thing smarter and i love it yeah and i i, I think what is good about a lot of this sort of thing is uh, a, most of it is good in more than one way, uh, not just about sustainability, environmental uh, impacts, but saving you time in the case of better traffic lights. So you're not sitting there, you know, just wasting not only fuel, but but your life <laughs> just waiting for right. that that light to change or or a, you know, a, a situation where uh, you're you're able to to just get better information when you're bicycling and, and not not having to, to kind of juggle things that aren't really meant for that. Uh, a lot of this is just good in that way, too. Well, let's uh, let's keep it in the family a bit and talk about Nest. Nest will roll out Nest Renew. This is a free service uh, to users of third gen Nest learning thermostat next or excuse me, Nest thermostat E and the 2020 Nest thermostat. Uh, new Renew can be automatically or will or excuse me, can automatically adjust your thermostat usage. So you're doing more of your heating and cooling with renewable options like wind and so, uh, solar, that sort of stuff when they're readily available. And if your utility charges different rates at different parts of the day, it can reduce usage when power is more expensive. So, again, an effort to make things a little more efficient. Uh, if you want, you can pay $10 a month for Nest Renew Premium, which enrolls you in a clean energy match. This will attempt to offset your energy usage by buying energy credits from the Bethel Wind Project and more projects to be added later. Uh, this is similar to the service provided by Arcadia and others. Uh, both the free Nest Renew and Premium version will be available in the U.S. by invitation only, at least for now, before coming uh, becoming widely available to everybody else. Yeah, I um, am part of a program that uh, LA's uh, power utility does with Nest, and I think other utilities around the country do this too, called Energy Rush Hour. 
so when we have a heat wave, uh, recently this has happened quite a bit. Uh, it gets above 100 degrees. Everybody's turning on their air conditioner. Uh, because I participated in it, I get a little rebate on my, my bill, uh, but I'm also contributing to lessening the stress on the power grid, making it less likely that we have a blackout, which is good for all of us, by letting them control my thermostat. And the way that works is when they know, for instance, that there's going to be an energy rush hour between, say, 6 and 8 p.m., right, because they, they want to reduce the load, they will actually lower my thermostat ahead of time. So they will cool my house lower than I normally do so that it is cooler going into the rush hour when they've raised it. So let's say I normally do my, mm -hmm. my air conditioning at 78 degrees. They'll lower it to 74 ahead of time. And then they'll up it to 80 during the rush hour so that it's less likely to go on, but the house is cooler. So that's, I think, how this is going to work. Nest Renew would say like, hey, we'll, we'll cool you down when it's cheap and when there's solar and wind available uh, ahead of time of, you know, raising it when it gets more expensive. I mean, as as somebody who, <laughs> I mean, the air conditioning uh, is is a great example of yeah, uh, uh, energy usage that is very costly. And uh, I I I have an air conditioner now. I know my my mom does as well. But um, she's she's pretty up on the. And I know this totally depends on where you live and 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 the grid that you're a part of. But she's very up on. Well, you know, you can't run the dishwasher. You know, between these times. Same goes for energy sucking uh, things like uh, an air conditioner and a thermostat to be a little bit smarter to say, yeah, I know it seems like during the high time, you know, it's 80 degrees, like you were saying, Tom, because we've dropped down the temperature, you're probably going to be okay. Of course, you can override this as a customer, you know, and you're probably going to have to pay for it. But I think having something that is in place to say, you know, you as a human want to be comfortable in a variety of ways, and we're going to take all of that off of your plate. That's yeah. great. Because there are other things you can do to save energy with your with your heating and cooling as well, uh, and you don't have to think about them with Nest Renew. Nest Renew is going to use its machine learning and its intelligence to kind of do it better than you could do it because you'll forget to go over and change settings or, or things like that. I think that's pretty exactly. cool. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, what isn't totally cool <laughs> comes from Twitch. No. Twitch confirmed that its data has been breached, and boy, was it breached. Attackers posted a 125 gigabyte torrent that includes Twitch's entire source code, common history, an unreleased competitor for Steam from Amazon Game Studios, Unity source code for a game called Vape World, and details of creator payouts going back to August 2019. The file doesn't appear to include passwords or addresses or email. However, it's worth noting that the torrent was labeled part one. Some users report that they have been asked by Twitch to change their password. <laughs> one would think all Twitch users should change passwords and enable two-factor authentication. If you haven't already, now's the time. Twitch I'm also says it's working to understand the extent of the breach. I'm a little surprised I haven't emailed everybody i haven't gotten one um when i use twitch every I haven't day either. yeah i think that's a little odd unless they knew of some specific cases or something and we don't know about that yet but it seems like something you want to tell everybody uh in your service in fact i've found some bots that tie into twitch that have been uh like on the money today saying uh by the way twitch had a major thing it has nothing to do with us but we're going to recommend you change your twitch password so they're kind of, I don't know, it's weird. The bot community is sort of doing it anyway or reminding its users. And they're not owned by Twitch or not told to, by Twitch to do anything. So that's pretty interesting. But this is really massive. Um, like Tom was saying this morning on TMS uh, for our tech segment, uh, during that conversation anyway, we talked about how, how big it actually is. And the fact that it's called part two doesn't mean anything, or part one rather, doesn't necessarily mean there's a part two or three or four. Um, but everybody who hears this or otherwise, if you have a Twitch account, change your password, enable two-factor authentication if you haven't, and if you already have two-factor authentication, still change your password. Uh, it's just the safe thing to do. Um, but hopefully, this uh, you know we'll we'll hear more about this. We'll hear if there's any anything more drastic about it. A lot of people are freaking out about the idea that all comment history for every video is in this uh, export, and I would say calm down because it's not that big a deal the they were public to begin I mean, with i i feel like <laughs> comment history is like the least of my worries yeah, yeah i agree you know if i'm if i'm active on twitch uh 
Yeah. I mean, I, the, you know. the key to remember, in case you're getting lost in the confusion here, there were no emails, passwords, addresses in this file. Uh, they didn't claim to have any, and nobody's found any. The reason everybody say change your password is, gosh, there's some things in here that are hashed that could be passwords. Maybe they're not. Uh, and it's set called part one, which means maybe yeah. they got more out of the database. If they got this much, they might have got hashed passwords. So it's just smart to be like, you know what? If there's even a question, just change your password. Uh, and then you won't have to worry about it, right? You won't have to be gambling about it. It doesn't mean that they have passwords. It doesn't mean that there is an actual threat. Uh, it's just playing it safe. What they did do was get a huge amount of data out of Twitch, and that's where it starts to get interesting. Uh, to, it, it almost feels like they imaged drives. They have so much, I mean, this, this torrent is so huge at 125 gigabytes, nobody has actually confirmed every single thing that's in it because it's a huge tree of nested folders. Uh, to me, I, I, I mean, the easiest way for someone to get this much data out of Twitch is to be inside of Twitch already as an authenticated mm -hmm. user. Mm. We don't, I'm not saying that that is what happened, uh, but it's, it's, it certainly raises questions like if it wasn't someone inside the company, how did they get all of this out without you noticing? Yeah. The one thing we haven't heard is about Twitch keys, uh, steam keys, stream keys, rather, I keep saying steam stream keys are kind of a weird way of authenticating your account and running a stream. And it's this key that only you have. Well, if those got out, the potential is there for somebody to take over your account, whether they have your, or well, at least stream on your account. Stream on your account they have without your, your password. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They don't need your password or your username to do it. So, uh, and when you maybe, reset your password, it resets your stream keys. So there's another reason to reset your password, right? Exactly. Yep. Yeah. All right, folks. Uh, well, if uh, if you've got thoughts on this, email us feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Uh, also, uh, if you've been admiring that new logo, it's not even that new anymore. We got that new colorful logo in our album art. Uh, you can get that on a hat uh, or T-shirt. We've got hoodies. We got masks. We got mouse pads. We got baby bibs. They're all over there at dailytechnewsshow.com/store. Available to ship to you now. <laughs> Uber's adding some travel features for those of you who have returned to traveling by air. First, the old. Uber, uh, in its announcement, highlighted Uber Reserve. That actually launched at 20 airports back in November 2020, but not that many people were flying in November 2020, so they've tweaked it a little and reintroduced it. Uh, I guess that's worth it. Uber Reserve lets you schedule an airport pickup from Uber's black car service, a little more expensive, up to 30 days in advance. So what you do is you enter your flight information uh, up to 30 days in advance, and then Uber will not only let you know if your flight time changes, which is kind of nice, but it'll automatically adjust your pickup time. Uh, so if your flight comes in late or maybe it comes in early, uh, the driver will be there. Drivers will also wait for you up to an hour after your flight lands. So you have time to grab a sandwich, get your bags, all that. But let's say you didn't plan ahead or you don't want to drop the bucks on a black car service. So you called an Uber after you landed at an airport. Uber says it has now tweaked its machine learning to better match you with drivers so you don't have to wait as long. Now, this only works at 15 airports, but uh, that's a nice feature. There's also another feature called Ready When You Are. This is only active at six airports, but it lets you delay your pickup. You've already called your car and maybe you need another 10 or 20 minutes to pick up your bags or grab your lunch. Ready When You Are is available on the Android app with iOS getting it in November, again, only at six airports. And finally, one airport, Toronto's Pearson Airport, YYZ, will let you order food for pickup at airport restaurants through Uber Eats. Uh, Uber says it plans to expand all these features to more airports eventually. Mm. Well, I, like, I gotta say yeah. when, uh, oh, go ahead, Scott. No, I was just gonna say, I'd like, I'd like that they're expanding, but it feels like they're expanding features into the who can afford it range more than not and maybe that's where the growth is maybe that's where you just talk about know, the black car service the rest of it is just in the regular service it is but i i don't know why it feels that way i don't know why and in fact the, the expansion is in the cheap stuff yeah that's the Uber true reserve for the black car was already there i guess that's true um i don't you know i don't know how these companies even do what they do in a post-covid world but um sarah you were talking before and during our prep about this this in interesting juxtaposition of sort of before COVID Uber use and post COVID Uber use and that you're using Uber Eats more, more than you do the driving service. I mean, but, multiple know. times a week. Yes. I haven't been in, in the back of an Uber, uh, since late 2019, just cause yeah. 
it, I mean, COVID for sure, but even before that, it was just kind of where I lived and, and things had changed. The Uber Reserve, it, I actually found the Uber Reserve rollout to be sort of strange, you know, in November of 2020, less than a year ago, but still very much COVID times. I was like, well, okay, I guess some people, you know, if you're a business traveler, this is really going to be helpful to you. But I don't, and especially because of that, you know, Uber Black service and the fact that it's a little bit more expensive to use that, I can't imagine that many people who are landing at an airport would say, yeah, I really, you know, I, 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 I really want to make use of the service. You're probably just going to call an Uber when you're ready to go when you've picked I, up your bags. I, I probably should admit this, but we definitely called an Uber Black one time coming out of LAX uh, and paid the extra money because they would pick you up curbside. LAX changed it so that Ubers pick you up at this special location that you have to walk to. It's not mm. that far, but it's it's a longish walk. Uh, they have shuttles that'll take you there too. And we were so tired uh, that we were like, you know what, forget it. Let's, let's pay the extra money so we don't have to walk over there. Uh, and and I so, so it's that mindset that I think happens, especially like you say, Sarah, for business travelers that travel a lot where they're like, you know what, I just wanna walk out there and walk out of my car. I don't want to stand there looking for it. I don't want to wonder if it's coming. I don't want to wait 20 more minutes. I just want to get home. And I and and yes, I certainly can't afford to do that all the time. Uh, and, but it, you'll, you'll get some people doing that. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. you, I think yeah, for I, sure. I think for the sure. fact that I mean, we're all I, paying more. And for I know food. this is only in uh, Toronto's uh, airport, but Uber Eats in the airport. <laughs> I love it. Oh, do I love it? Just yeah. one I mean, last line to wait in. It's the same principle, right? Which is like, you know what? I just want to walk up and get my food. I don't want to stand yeah. there and wait yeah. to order. I want to order now. Yeah, it yeah used it's like, to be, I'm going to I'm, I don't, I don't I'm gonna go ahead and order. Bucks. It's going to take me 20 minutes to, yeah. to get to the restaurant that I'm ordering from. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to complain that like, well, I'm not paying two bucks extra to have, you know, DoorDash or Uber Eats bring this to the door. And now I'm like, oh, I think it's worth the two bucks. I don't want to go. Any, I don't want to drive. You know, like that's how they get you. They've got us. We're all in. We're in it. Black service yeah. or not. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I mean, listen, you know, all kidding aside, I I think this is, you know, it's kind of like how we were talking about Google Maps uh, uh, um, uh, stuff earlier in the show. It's it's Uber is making the service make more sense for more people. What's not if, to like? If you save enough time by not having to drive and get your food, that you can create something at your job that makes you more than the two dollar fee. Well, then it's only, it's smart. It's not lazy. It's smart. Yeah, yeah. That's what I say. Well, let's talk about uh, TikTok and bans. Restofworld.org. It's got a story up about how uh, this has affected creators uh, since India banned TikTok in June of 2020. Kind of had an effect. It turns out. Probably don't hear about it a lot here. So we're going to hear about it today. The obvious effect is that you might have guessed this. Uh, is that users have moved to Instagram's Reels. But that's not the same story for creators. India had four of the top 15 paid TikTok creators in the world and 7.7% of the world's TikTok influencers before the June 2020 ban. So when Reels launched in India in 2020, of, or in uh, July of 2020, it didn't go after those TikTok creators. Instead, it sought more aspirational upmarket lifestyle creators. It also put on uh, this thing more strict requirements for getting promoted by the algorithm. So reels will not be recommended if they're blurry uh, or bear a watermark or a logo or have a border, especially if they have the watermark from TikTok. They won't they won't push those. Uh, this makes it harder for users on more affordable phones to get promoted. Um, so, yeah, a pretty massive effect, at least in that, you know, this this niche market of of content creation for that uh, for that platform. And. Think about it. If your way of making money or your number one platform is suddenly yanked away, you know, what are you going to do? Well, and that's what this rest of world article focuses on is that TikTok was very accessible, uh, very, very equitable in what it promoted. And so you had a lot of folks in rural areas uh, on less bandwidth, uh, putting short videos up and that Instagram with reels has favored a more celebrity oriented, fashionable upper class lifestyle. And so folks that were making bank on TikTok, suddenly with TikTok being banned because the government wants to teach China a lesson, these people now 
can't make money. And Instagram's reels has not filled the gap for these creators the way that you might have expected it would. Yeah, the the takeaway I get from this is, you know, I I consider myself a creator. I think we're all creators on this panel and we create something that is consumed by somebody else. I'm also a consumer slash user of all sorts of content that other people create. And just the idea that uh, you, you, you get a platform yanked away from you and then you got to just, okay, well, where is everybody? Where are all the users? <laughs> I'm a creator. I need to, I, I need to follow the users or no one will, will, uh, you know, watch or listen to my things. I have to go to this other platform and then I have to deal with all the ways that this other platform works for me in a crappier way than the platform that I used to have because of government stuff that has nothing to do with me. It's kind of a mess. Uh, and I, you know, I, I really feel for folks that are in uh, various parts of the world who are, are going through this. And, you know, I, 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 I like to say that I'm always on the side of creators, but, uh, it is kind of a punishing business. Yeah. And this is, uh, this is one of those examples when, when, when governments take action for one reason, you have unintended side, side effects, uh, and, and that good, good job to rest of world.org for, for making that accessible for people to understand. Well, uh, if you need a new pair of shoes, you might like this next story because Microsoft and Adidas are partnering to create limited edition Xbox sneakers, celebrating 20 years, 20 years since the original release of the Xbox console on November 15th, 2001. I know. I couldn't believe it either. It's been 20 years. The sneakers will sport an Xbox logo and translucent green details, and also a separate Xbox-inspired sneaker will be available for purchase later this year. Let us not forget, also, Microsoft is also planning to release an Xbox mini fridge for the holiday season. The company has promised it would offer more details about the fridge later this month. Yeah. Way more excited about the fridge myself. I am too. <laughs> I mean, it's it's based on the, it's funny because that whole thing is based on the fact that the Xbox Series X, when it was announced, everybody had a heyday and put memes all over the internet about how it looked like a big fridge and or a server farm or whatever. The People had lots of ideas, but fridge really won out. And the minute they announced that they were going to do that and they showed a prototype and a video, everybody lost their minds. It's great. It's a great way to uh, to sort of embrace your simplistic design of the series x and you know really go with this idea i would love that fridge love it would get up one in a heartbeat don't think they're going to be very many and i don't think they're going to be affordable but i would love one instead maybe settle for the shoes but that is an amazing landmark if you think about it 20 years of that console uh that means think about it in 2001 that was what you go 20 years backwards you're what 81 I Think thought I was. I thought it was a misprint when I read this this morning. I was like, crazy. "Xbox wasn't around in 2001. That's not right." But it's crazy. Was. They yeah, were yeah. all. That's only six, seven years after Sony's even doing anything. So, and it was a crazy they, product. Yeah. Consoles were failing. Why would Microsoft of all people make a game console when Sega can't even keep theirs going? It, mm. That was yeah. That's nuts. It's a, it's I don't know about these sneakers. They just, I mean, I'm not a sneaker person. So you sneaker folks in the audience, uh, let, let us know what I'm missing, but they just seem like green shoes to me. Like, shouldn't they do something <laughs> fun? Like when it's time to replace them, there's a red ring lights up for you or something. Oh, nice. I see what you did there with the red ring. Let's bring that thing back to, <laughs> back to Vogue. I think that's a great <laughs> idea. All right, let's check out the mailbag. Uh, we got we got a real nice note from Joseph who said, thank you so much for adding in Gaming News Monthly to the DTNS feed. Episode one was all the absolute video game essentials wrapped up into a short and digestible summary. The information was broken out into meaningful sections and explained in enough detail without getting into the weeds. Please continue the great work on this and the main show and, of course, GDI2. Oh, my gosh, Joseph, that's the best. Uh, Jen Cutter is very pleased to hear it. That's exactly what we were going for. Uh, so I'm very glad that that it came across that way. And uh, good news, there will be another one in in November. Uh, she's already hard at work uh, making that happen. And we may be uh, starting a science news monthly from Dr. Nikki Ackerman's look for that in November as well. 
Nice. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, so Joseph, we're so glad you're enjoying it. Um, anybody else who has thoughts, comments, anything that we talk about on the show, any of our, our, our shows that we've been rolling out to you recently, please do let us know. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. We also want to thank our brand new boss, and that brand new boss is Dan Gilbert. Dan just started backing us on Patreon. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Who's going to be the next person to be as smart as Dan? Dan understood yesterday when I said, hey, if you want to get your name on the show, become a Patreon patron right now, and you'll get it on tomorrow's show. And Dan was like, hey, I can do that. And he did. And it helps he the did. show. And it helps Dan. Yeah. Everybody wins. Yay. Thank you, Dan. Also, thanks to Scott Johnson for being with us today. Scott, where can people keep up with what you've been up to? Well, check out frogpants.com because that's where most of it is. But uh, these days, it's uh, a lot of art. We are, are fulfilling Kickstarters and having all kinds of fun stuff happen on the back end of that. So big stuff on the uh, horizon. But if you want to catch the shows that are happening every day in some form, check it out at frogpants.com. And you can always uh, find me publicly over at Twitter, twitter.com slash Scott Johnson. Excellent. Well, folks, we are live on this show Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. That's 2030 UTC. You can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We got a great show tomorrow. We'll be back with Justin Robert Young. Molly Wood will be with us promoting her new show, How We Survive. And Stacey Higginbotham will explain what the Matter platform is actually good for. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>